Hey everybody, it's Chris from Tipton and Hurst, and it's time for a little happy. I tried not to be talking or laughing first off because every time it does it, it freeze frames and I always look like this or this or <laughs> something crazy. So or my eyes are closed, so we thought we'd try to, to be nice and then we be can- Be serious. We're trying be, to be serious. Very serious. We're always very serious. So anyway, today we thought we'd play I'm actually being lazy today because I actually have a wedding bouquet to do for tomorrow and I thought I would just do it today for one of our happies so I don't have to do things twice. So it gives me something to do, gets my work done, and also we get to have a little fun with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a bouquet of all Phalaenopsis orchids and these are all fresh. They're also called butterfly orchids. They're kind of wonderful. And we're going to use two stems of white hydrangea as a base. And then when we finish, we're going to back it with a little bit of the salal leaves or lemon leaf. Um, salal is kind of like tomatoes, tomatoes. Everyone calls it something a little bit different. We call it salal, which I'm sure is wrong and probably drawing out the wrong syllable, but it is what it is. And then if we have time at the end, I'm going to show you a really quick trick how to make a little floral crown. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start out with our hydrangea. And we're going to take all the leaves off, of course. We have people saying that Phalaenopsis orchids are their favorite. Oh, I think they're going to be excited. Oh, wonderful. Well, good. So we have Miss Linda from Norfolk, UK. Oh, my goodness. Miss Rhonda from Memphis. Miss Rhonda from West Little Rock. Miss Becky from Crossit. Miss Alice, of course, from Alabama. The gang's all here. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to look for a really long orchid to start out with. And I think I'm going to choose this one. Isn't that perfection? Man, that looks like it's just not even real. So then we're going to take another one and we're going to shoot it off to the side of this one. And then I'm going to take a smaller one and I'm going to put it over to here. So what I'm trying to look at is the overall effect of the finished shape. Because this bride wants it to be more or less very oval. So I'm going to take that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take my hydrangea and I'm going to put it underneath here. And this is just kind of a safeguard. So if something goes wrong, ooh, it's spinning out. If something goes wrong, it still looks like that there's a mass in the middle of white. This is a really big mass in the middle right here. Miss Bonnie from New Jersey is watching. Miss Joy from Little Rock, Georgia awesome. from Georgia. Georgia from Georgia. Alabama, Cincinnati, Florida, New Zealand. Cool. So how's Missouri. That, how's that looking? Looking kind of squatty to me. We're going to take that one up. This is actually exciting for me because I have never seen you make a bouquet just like this. So. Well, you may not in the end. <laughs> oh, <sh> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. So, whatever. It will come off great. Okay. And our sweet bride will be happy. Yeah, well, we hope so. She's so sweet. And we feel so bad about it. She was supposed to get married this weekend. She's still going to get married this weekend. She's just not going to get married in the way that she thought. I mean, as far as the location and the space, she's going to have a small, much smaller, more intimate wedding. Yes. And then a party later. And then a party in later. A few yeah. So now I'm going to actually take my Oasis tape that I always love to use to secure this. Miss Mary said, as a florist, she loves working with orchids. They are so cool. So what I'm going to do now, though, we've got a lot of duplication on this. So now I'm going to go back and kind of pull a couple of these off because they're being wasted more or less. We have lots of people saying, oh my word, OMG, these are so beautiful. They are pretty, aren't they? So we're going to replace. <laughs> Miss Jeannie said North Carolina is flipping over these orchids. Oh, cool. Not that one. So let's look. I'm trying to find where there's a duplication or a lot of mass on top of each other. And I'm going to show you why though. Bear with me, sorry, we're live, but it's gotta be right. So, 
you know, I take wedding bouquets very seriously because if you were thinking about it, of all the things in a child's or a, a young girl's life, what are the two main things she always thinks about? Her wedding dress and her flowers that she's going to carry. That's the one thing that she always, so we always want that to be perfect. So when we hand off a wedding bouquet to a bride and she said, it's exactly what I wanted, I know I've done my job right. So you know, what about adding that long one right there? Think did she, she want like it longer or did she want it more of a clutch? I think she went more oval, wasn't it? More oval. So that's good. It's still good there then? Yes, yeah, so the length is good, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna take these off here. She just likes more of that roundy, moundy look, I think. Okay, roundy, moundy look. Well, I think I'm still going to add one more. How about there? Is that better? Where'd you add that one? We can't really see Here. that. Oh, right there. We yeah. see. Does that look good? Sure. Face wise. Yeah. Now, it's not beyond me to get to a wedding. What we do now is we send a lot of pictures back and mm -hmm. forth to our brides. Is this okay? Do you like it more of rounded or whatever? I still like to hand these off to the bride just to A, to see her reaction and also to do any kind of last minute tweaks. So it's not uncommon for me to be in the middle of the ground flipping and twicking and whatever else we need to do to make it right. So we have a few questions. How do you prevent hydrangeas from wilting? Miss Sue asked. Well, on this case, the hydrangea bloom will be in the water along with the stems of orchids. So it really shouldn't be that big of a problem. And then someone asked, will the blooms bruise if you touch them? Well, I have a little trick for that. They do bruise easily, but we're gonna fix that. I wanna show you a little trick how to get around some of that as we go through it, especially when you're working with them on halos or crowns or whatever. Okay, let me look at this again. Kind of walked up there. Pull that back to there. Mm. Really, I don't even need that one, do I? Let me pull this one out. Mm. We are live. You know, people suggest like, you know, maybe you should put the camera on a tripod. And these are the reasons why I'm like going back and forth. Yeah. People always he holds it up yeah. and he holds it down and all around. Yeah, all around. You have people saying, so pretty, gorgeous, Chris. Okay, let me fix this one. I got a wild one here. We got a wild hair? We got a wild hair there. I think I'm going to insert that one. Well, I don't even know that I need that one, do I? Do I need that other one? I think so. Okay. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? So now we're going to go back and how you would do finish this out is you would just base it with the salal leaves and this just gives a little bit more tension underneath to push everything up just like that but we're still not finished. I'm going to tape this off and then I'm going to show you another trick about how to wire orchids. Hopefully you're not too bored. Everyone's saying it's gorgeous, beautiful. You nailed it. It looks perfect. And hopefully our bride will say the same thing. Yeah. Love y'all to death. Yeah. It doesn't matter what y'all <laughs> like. Matter what what think today. <laughs> like. It's about what my bride likes. <laughs> Love you, but okay. So let's set that down there like that. So let me show you a really quick fun trick on how to wire an orchid. So what I've done is I've actually taken this, this normal 18 gauge wire, florist wire, and all we've done is we've taken white corsage tape, and of course we're just gonna take it like this. We're gonna spin it all the way down just like that. So we have people asking how much a bouquet like that would cost. That will range anywhere from, um, yeah, 200 to $300. Depending on how, you know, if she wanted more stems, if she wanted it to be wider, whatever. So we're kind of all over, you know, we can do that. The reason being that most of these orchid stems run anywhere from 45 to 70, $65 a stem. So it doesn't take long to add up. 
So now, let me show you what I'm doing now. And we also have some people asking if they could see the back of the bouquet when you get a chance. Sure. So I'm going to take my little... So I just realized we apparently don't use bleach downstairs. We wash the... I mean, these look <laughs> they're dirty. They're not, I promise. So what I've done is I've actually taken this and I've done a little pin wire. So if you look at the Phalaenopsis orchid, if you get really close, you can see right there. Let's zoom in a little the bit. The little throat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin it through there, a little hairpin, and I'm going to pull it through there. So you can see kind of what I've done there. And I've pinned it through that. Now I go back and I tape this, like, oops, oops, get out of there. Just like this to hold that. Don't want to do that when not worth the trouble. So I'm actually going to do about three or four of these really quick. And I don't want to do that one. That one. I'll use these two when I make the real quick little hair piece. Your sister asked, she just got on and she asked for those real orchids. Yes, ma'am. They certainly are. So another trick, if you by chance, and someone just asked earlier about bruising, these do bruise pretty fast. So what you can do with their bruising is actually take Design Master Flat White Paint. And let's say, let me show you. I'm gonna show you what, what I mean by that. So I'm gonna actually bruise this one. Well, I tore that one. <laughs> How'd I do? How we doing? How we doing? Anyway. See that bruise? So what you would wanna do, rip that off too. And all you're going to do is take a little bit of paint and you're going to paint the back of it. And I'll let that set, but already you can tell that it's covering that up. So you put another coat, but you're always just going to paint the back of the orchid, not the front, but the back. And that's going to seal that off. So that's the trick of the day to save an orchid that was has got a wrinkle or a spot on it. You always want to paint from behind. Miss Jean asked if you always wanted to be a florist. Pretty much. I've done it since I was 14. So um, it's really the only real job I've ever had. I've actually, um, when I was 16, I had the opportunity. I had a wonderful mentor that thought I was creative named Babby Lovett in McCrory, Arkansas who actually had me come to, she had a wonderful store in Memphis at John Simmons. Anyone from Memphis probably remembers John Simmons. It was, it was the it place in Memphis when I was young. And she would let me come and help her. She had a beautiful boutique store, a fashion store, where she didn't have clothes on the rack. You actually came and sat down and we brought the clothes out to you to show you what was there. And she let me do window displays and all that kind of fun stuff. And it wasn't because that was what she thought I wanted to do. She just wanted to be in that creative atmosphere. So between that and working in the flower shop since I was 14, I've always been very blessed to have great mentors and people that kind of believed in me quite a bit. So um, with that being said, these two tricks I've learned came from Peggy Daniels and Barbara Rawls. They're the ones that taught me how to hand wire. That and Miss Bobby St. Pierre in Jonesboro, Arkansas. She also taught me how to make a wedding bouquet that would, would bounce on one finger, which that's unheard of anymore. People can do that. So that's kind of really a lost art form, I hate to say, but it is. People really don't do hand wire anymore because it's so labor intensive. But that's something that I was fortunate enough to learn. I'm going to use that for something else. So there's that. So the reason why I went back and did this because I could not get a stem to be perfect up there. So that kind of fills up the space in the top. Of course, I really can't see what I'm doing. I'm hoping that looks okay. So then you would once again tape that off like we've done before. 
Probably should have used green tape on those for that way it doesn't show up as bad. But on wedding workmen all white, I tend to use all white tape that way that shows less blemishes or mechanics in that. So I'm going to tape that off. Miss Carol says she tries to make a point to take a break in her day where she lives in Sheridan to watch y'all. She loves seeing what you come up with every oh, day. Oh, good. So let me hold the back. So that's the back of it. Pretty clean. And the reason why I do this a lot, A, is to cover your mechanics up. And plus, like I said, you put those in there and you actually reverse them. It keeps pushing the orchids out, more or less. That's how the hydrangeas come in, by the way, little pops of that. So when we get to the wedding tomorrow, we'll actually recut all the stems. We'll finish wrapping that with ribbon. And then it's a finished product. So let me show you a really quick trick, too, about making a halo. So you can easily take one, one wire like this, or if you want it to be more sturdy, you would take it like this, where you just twist it around, just like that. Miss Linda said this florist can still wire and tape bouquets that will balance. Well, you are a dying breed. But she said it is getting breed. to be a lost, <laughs> lost You are heart. a dying breed. Trust me. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've had the opportunity to um, be around some younger florists who honestly don't know how to do that because everything's glue now. And so I'm not much of a glue person. I still hand wire a lot of our corsage work, which can drive you kind of crazy or not crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two stems of Ruscus and we're going to lay these together just like this. And we're going to go ahead and twist these really quickly together. We have someone that just joined on and asked if you used a bouquet holder. Nope, it's all hand done. All hand done. So now we're going to take this end, the smaller end of the Ruscus, and I'm going to catch it right there. And you could easily weave these through or you can add it to it. You can do whatever. For time's sake, I'm just going to weave it like that. Miss Becky said, almost makes me want to get married. Ha, no. <laughs> that didn't sound very encouraging. So I'm going to do two more wires. I ran out of wire. So quickly, I'm going to just tape this like this. You know, halos are becoming very popular at weddings now, aren't they? Oh, uh, very much. Well, just in general, to wear out in public or whatever. You know, it's like a, you know, hairpiece, more or less. And actually, do I really need all that wire? This would be what you'd want to use if you were going back and gluing or wiring on later to make like a full headpiece or a full um, headband or crown, floral crown, whatever you want to call it. So let me twist that there. But we do we do some gluing. It's just I don't have the patience to set and and my AFD friends and other people that are in the flower business love it and l live for it. And I wish I had the patience or the know how to make it work for me because when I'm gluing, it seems like the glue takes forever to dry sometimes. And so by the time it's ready, to, I mean, I just don't have the patience for it, I guess. I don't know what my problem is. Someone asked how long will the orchids last out of water? Those? Um, a couple of days normally if it's not too hot. Um, but in general, they don't last that well. Not as well as a Cymbidium orchid would. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to catch this together from where I wired it. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and start cutting out pieces of this. Oops, I need to wrap that around a little bit better. Quick and easy. Th this is not the end-all be-all. I just wanted to show you a really quick trick. And then we'll go back and t give a little bit of a haircut to it. That's why I doubled it up. You could actually take these pieces later on for boutonnieres or corsages or whatever, right? And use those for other things. So let's wire one two, three. So we're going to wire three orchids again. Just like that. 
Will you be the model of the hair piece once you get it done? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. I know you were living for that. I was. No. We they probably really want you to be the model. No, 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 no. Behind the scenes, here yeah, I am. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we so, have someone that says they love orchids and they love Arkansas. They're from Texas. Awesome. Miss Tammy says she usually catches us late, but she's so excited about this topic. She's from Mississippi. Oh, good. We have someone watching from the Philippines. Well, wonderful. From Northern Ireland. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape these in green because when I finish, I'm actually just gonna wrap them around what I've already done with the wire instead of gluing them. Now that's not to say that we couldn't go back and glue smaller stuff to it later, but on the larger flowers, I still like to hand wire those in there. So let's see, let's put it right in there. And we have someone one. from New Jersey watching today. Well, wonderful. How is New Jersey today? How's everybody? At, where is everybody today? Wherever we, where is everybody from? Miss Linda asked, which orchids are your favorite? Um, I like the Phalaenopsis just because I think they're just beautiful, beautiful and simple. They are very, um, they can bruise really easy. So on handwork, they can be a little cumbersome for me sometimes. I have to be a lot slower and more gentle with them, which is not really my forte because I'm normally going so fast. Maybe I should slow down, huh? Nah. Nah, that takes all the fun out of it. I have real bad attention deficits, so if I'm doing something <laughs> for more than five minutes, I've, as Christine will tell you, I'm like shiny butterfly. Here I go, and I'm off on something else. What was it the other day I was needing focus, you to do focus, something? Focus, focus, focus. You kept saying focus. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to get your coffee and put it in the bride's room, and it'll all be ready for you to do it. So anyway, ta-ta. Quick, easy. You can go back and add more or less. I'm sure i got stuff swinging out of my head, but you would just go back and snip that off. I just wanted to show you a really simple way. And this is a really fun thing to do when you're going out to a party or just going out on a picnic or going to something fun that you want to get a little bit of attention with is to wear flowers. We always want you to wear flowers. So here's our wedding bouquet today. I sure hope our bride likes it as much as y'all did. And here's our simple headpiece to go with it. Because I thought that wouldn't really take that much time, which took a little bit longer than I thought. But anyway, Hope y'all had a blessed day. Thank y'all for watching, and we will see y'all. Are we doing this tomorrow? Yeah, I'm back tomorrow. Oh, you're well. Okay, you're then. Well, then too. I guess. You're well, we, but too. we've actually got work tomorrow. Well, that's too. true too. But it depends on how we get all those balloons up tomorrow. Yes, that's true. But anyway, we'll be here tomorrow. I'm sure at some point we'll see you tomorrow. Y'all have a blessed night, and thanks so much for watching our happies. Thank you for being here, and thank you for always sharing with us. All right, y'all have a good one. We'll see you. Thanks.